Okay, so in atoms, you know, you have uh, shells, major shells, then subshells, and all that chemistry is based on that. You have inert gases or noble gases. Uh, so there, the shells are uh, major shells are closed, and then uh, when one more electron you put, a new shell starts. In periodic table, a new period starts. Right, so you have that uh, hydrogen. Then you have lithium below that. Right, below that you have uh, sodium, potassium. So these are the elements at which a new shell starts. And there are many things common. They are all called alkali metals. So there are many of the properties are common because they all have closed shell and one more electron. A new shell has just started. So, there are many of the properties which are common in this. Similarly, if you go for two electrons beyond a closed shells, you get that uh, period 2 a, so magnesium and uh, beryllium and those. So, there are also the properties, many of the properties are common, all, all kinds of chemical bonds and these things, valency, these things are common. So, the properties are largely decided by those extra valence electrons. So, once the shell is closed, then uh, those extra valence electrons, they decide the properties. Those inner electrons are not that much participating in all kinds of uh, interactions. Then there is uh, uh, reactivity also, you know, that if you have those helium and argon and neon closed shell uh, elements, there the chemical reactivity is very small. They are that is why they are called inert, they are called inert and uh, once you have these uh, alkali metals or alkaline earth metals, the reactivity is, is very high. So, all these things depend on the shell structure, the energies are so arranged that when you start filling up, then uh, somewhere you have major gap in the energy and you say that here the shell closes and here a new shell starts. Now, this reflects in uh, many things. Uh, yesterday, the last lecture we talked about uh, ionization energy, if you want to pull one electron out. So, when you have this closed shell, then uh, pulling one electron out is difficult, they are extra stable, they are extra stable. But if you have just new, a new shell has just started, the it is easy. So, you can pull it uh, uh, very easily. So, the ionization energy will go down there and then gradually it will increase and when uh, the shell closes, uh, the ionization energy is highest. Similarly, in many properties, radius, atomic radius, many properties you see that the shell reflects, the shell shows up. Now, similar thing also happens in a nucleus. In a nucleus also the number of neutrons and number of protons, how many neutrons are there and how many protons are there. So, the a, a similar shell structure is seen, if you look at the properties, then there are certain numbers, uh, this, when this proton number or neutron number just crosses that, you, you, you look for one nucleus, then next nucleus and then you, next nucleus by putting one more proton or one more neutron and so on, different nuclei when you compare. Although the life is uh, slightly more complicated, because here there are two kinds protons and neutrons, there you had only one kind, it was only electrons. So, you talk in terms of 20 electrons or 21 electrons, but here there are two of them protons and neutron. But still, but still you have uh, uh, certain numbers. So, if z is equal to that number or n is equal to that number, then uh, it is extra stable, its radius suddenly shows a discontinuity, its proton separation energy which is uh, something like that ionization energy, there you remove one electron and ask how much energy is needed, here you remove one proton and you ask how much energy is, is needed. So, proton separation energy, neutron separation energy, all the, uh, many things are there which show some structures. I will just show some of them to you from a book, which is uh, uh, this is by Richard A. Dunlop.
by this Thomson Brooks Cole I just draw the, uh, things for you some of the some of the things now this is uh, figure 5.3 at page 16 uh, page 46 this talks of uh, binding energy which binding energy per nucleon you remember this curve binding energy per nucleon as a function of a so measured value and minus binding energy per nucleon as calculated from that uh, semi semi empirical mass formula right one can calculate that and one can measure that so there is some difference in that and uh, that difference is plotted this quantity is plotted on the on the y axis side and x axis side it is a and i'll just draw the diagram maybe sometime i will show you on the screen and it is something of this sort. So, there are periodic uh, humps. So, there are some periodic humps and these humps where they occur uh, the numbers are n is 28, z is 28 for this hump, this hump then n is equal to 50 this hump, n is equal to 82 z is equal to 50 then here it is n is equal to 126 z is equal to 82. Remember the semi empirical mass formula we derived was uh, semi empirical we did talk of some asymmetry energy and said that it is coming because of those uh, energy levels and uh, fermions and therefore, uh, if you have uh, more neutrons than protons, neutrons are forced to go into the higher energy levels and so on. So, that shell structure is actually uh, uh, included there little bit, but only little bit. Okay. Largely, it was based on liquid drop uh, model. So, you do expect that if shell effects are, are large, you will have deviation from uh, this semi empirical mass formula and you can see here that at certain numbers this 28 or 50 or 82 one, at certain numbers when z acquires that number or n acquires that number the deviations are large. So, near shell closure the shell effects are, are largest as a closed shell and a new nucleon comes and a new shell starts. So, there is there where you will see that shell effect most prominently. Correct. So, at those places where uh, neutron number or proton number uh, is uh, like this 50, 82, 126 you see that your uh, prediction of semi empirical mass formula and the um, uh, measured binding energy per nucleon they differ. Okay. So, that is one then uh, another thing is uh, uh, this is change in the measured nuclear radius this is figure 5.5 change in the measured nuclear radius for a change in neutron number delta n equal to normalized to change predicted by that radius equation delta r measured by delta r calculated. what is delta r delta r is the this uh, n is increased to n plus 2 and how much is the radius change all right n is increased by because there is some even odd uh, effect also so to remove that it is changed in steps of 2 if it is even it is all even and so on so uh, the one which you calculate using the r not a power 1 by 3 and one which you measure right. So, that uh, 
ratio again shows similar kind of uh, fluctuations. I am sketching it. Okay. So, these type of uh, ups and downs are, are observed and once again the numbers which are here are n is equal to 20, 28, 50, 82 and so on. Right. Then uh, you have uh, number of stable isotones as a function of n. Hmm. This I believe I have on slide. Look at your screens. Okay. Yeah. N this is number of stable isotones as a function of neutron number n. So, on the uh, horizontal axis you have neutron number, on this axis you have a uh, neutron number. So, here you have a uh, neutron number okay, n, n is plotted here, this is n equal to 10, this is 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 90, 100 here and this side number of stable isotones. You know what is number of, I, what is isotone? Isotope you know? What is isotope? same number of protons, you can put more neutrons. So, all those nuclei are called isotope of a particular element. Right. Similarly, if you fix neutron number n and then ask and you put more z. Uh, so, you can ask what are those nuclei with this particular capital N? They are called isotones. Right. If n is fixed, you have several nuclei in which neutron number is same, then these nuclei are called isotones. If you have several nuclei in which proton number is same, then these nuclei are called isotopes. isotopes right? And uh, if uh, you have several nuclei in which capital A is fixed, z is also varying, n is also uh, different, but z plus n is same. So, those nuclei are called isobars right yeah. so for a particular n you can ask how many isotones are there stable isotones are there so how many different nuclei with different proton numbers can exist with that capital n so that is number of isotones now look at the screen again so on this uh, uh, vertical axis side you have number of stable isotones right here it is say this is 20, this is 20 and the corresponding point is here, this is 5, this is 5. So, with n equal to uh, 20, you have 5 stable isotones with neutron number 20 uh, by putting different number of protons, uh, you have 5 stable nuclei. But if you look at the 19 or 18 or 17, this number is 3, 10 this number is 2 or this side 21 this number is, uh, is 3 and so on. And here 28, 28 again it becomes 5, this is 28, this is 28, this is 20. Then uh, it is here, 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 here and all of sudden here, this is 50 this n is equal to 50. So, with n is equal to 50, you have 6 stable isotones. Then uh, these are numbers fluctuations and n is equal to 82. Again, you have 7, 7 uh, stable isotones with n equal to 82. So, these numbers that you are seeing here 50, 82, 28, 20, these show that if n is equal to one of these, you have uh, even if you put one more proton or you, you remove one, of one, one proton, still it remains stable. So, this n equal to 50 or n equal to 82 or 28 or 20, it is providing extra stability. Even if there are some more protons or, or number of protons is somewhat less, 
it, it does not beta decay. Okay. So, this is uh, about uh, this is stability. Now, from the same book you have figure 5.7 which talks of absorption cross section for 1 MeV neutrons. If we have a nucleus and you, uh, you send a neutron with certain energy here it is 1 mega electron energy. What is the probability that this neutron will be absorbed in the nucleus so, n will become n plus 1. So, if uh, you have a, a closed shell right extra stable shell then uh, getting one neutron absorbed there will be difficult neutrons are being bombarded on the nuclei and the probability of their getting absorbed and nucleus becoming uh, one more neutron in the nucleus that situation is uh, looked for probability for that absorption cross section for that that is plotted on this side. This is absorption cross section uh, in on the vertical side and horizontal side it is n and can you see the drops you have uh, numbers here in some units numbers here it is increasing neutron can get absorbed, but all of sudden here you can see a fall right the absorption cross section as you are increasing the n the absorption cross section on the average increases, but here there is sudden fall here there is sudden fall and that is at n equal to 50 this point is n is equal to 50. Then again once you cross that one then again you have uh, larger cross sections larger cross section, but all of sudden it falls here all of sudden it falls here and this number here is 82. Okay. These are all experimental results and these results are taken from physical review volume 78 1950 can you see this okay. page number 632. So, these are all experimental results measured results here are the cross sections absorption cross sections and all of a sudden it drops here and this number is at 126. So, many of the properties each one showing discontinuity at the same values 50, 82, 126. So, all these experiments suggest that there are some kind of shell structure and there is some kind of shell closure and those numbers where the shell close from the experiments those numbers are 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82, 126. Now, beyond that we do not have a stable nuclei, but then things are being studied in laboratory where nuclei with much higher uh, nuclear number A mass number A are created uh, for some time of course, uh, they are not stable as such and then studied. So, you have magic numbers beyond this also we will talk about later, but with the commonly available nuclei these are the num these are called magic numbers. Okay, these are called magic numbers essentially these are the numbers where the uh, measure shell closes and there is an energy gap. If you want to put one more elect one more neutron or one more proton if the number is this then there is a bigger energy gap. So, there is a kind of shell closure there. So, this is the uh, suggestions from experiments this is results coming from experiment various different kinds of properties not just one different kinds of property all showing discontinuities at these same numbers. So, these same numbers are uh, built in the structure of the theory. So, how do we understand why n equal to 50 nucleus is extra stable or z is equal to 50 nucleus is extra stable. So, how 
that results from where these numbers come. So, just like in atomic physics here also the scheme is the same. You assume what we call a single particle potential or one particle potential. In the nucleus you have so many protons and so many neutrons and if you pick up one and ask what is the field that this proton is seeing because of the rest of the nucleus. So, that we approximate by in the first uh, uh, attempt by a central potential some kind of central potential. So, if a particular proton is experiencing that central potential because of all other then each of the other protons and each of the other neutrons they also uh, experience the same potential. So, that is single particle uh, or mean mean potential theory or mean potential theory that you assume that this whole nucleus is giving an average kind of potential to each of its constituents. That is how in atomic physics also it is done you have multi electron system, but then you say that the whole atom is giving a particular potential to each of the electrons right and then uh, uh, that put with that potential you you solve for possible energy levels and these energy levels are open to all those electrons but then electrons are fermions and in one state uh, not more than two can go in one state in fact not not more than one can go and so on and so there is a auf bau principle of filling it up uh, and all that so similar structure we borrow in nuclear physics also we assume that for each of the constituents protons and neutrons this nucleus is providing some kind of potential. Then we will solve the energy levels for that particular potential. So, you will get some energy levels then you will say that okay, protons and neutrons will fill these uh, levels from below and taking account of that they are fermions. So, this is how the things will go and if uh, you find that there are gaps in the energy, uh, energy levels are grouped then the shell structure will come up. So, with that expectation the first the question the major question is what kind of potential that average potential one starts with. Two nucleon potential is uh, you, you know how complicated it was. So, the whole idea of this, this single particle potential is forget that come out with something simple. One of the very simple potentials is infinite square well potential. Just give it a try. So, infinite square well potential of some width r naught. So, it is uh, V r is equal to 0 for r less than r naught and is equal to infinity for r greater than r naught. This is called infinite square well potential and if you this is a central potential why is it a central potential because it does not depend on theta and phi any potential that depends only on r not on theta phi is a central potential. So, that means there is no uh, direction dependence if r is less than r naught that is a spherical volume in any direction you go in this volume you have the same potential it does not depend on theta phi. So, that is why it is a central potential and if it is a central potential then uh, uh, you can write the wave function or the Eigen functions of energy r theta phi the potential does not depend on theta phi, but the wave function does depend on theta phi ok. So, this is uh, that radial part you write u r by r and then it will be y ln theta phi. 
where y l m theta phi are spherical harmonics. Good. So, this theta phi function we already know what are those functions sin theta cos theta e to the power i phi and all those things and this u r by r as we had done earlier this satisfy the equation minus h cross square by 2 m then d 2 u d r square and plus v. So, for I am writing r less than r naught v is 0. So, it is or let me first write it and then we will put 0 v r plus l l plus 1 h cross square by 2 m r square u r and is equal to e times u r. These are the energies. So, this equation to be solved to get u and once you get u you put it here and you get the energy eigen functions and uh, you have those boundary conditions the wave function should be continuous everywhere and a slope should be same and all those things are there. Now, when the, you apply it to this infinite square well potential it is this v r is 0. So, for r less than r naught you just put v r is equal to 0 and you get this equation. u. This is to be solved with the condition that r equal to at r equal to r naught this u should become 0, because the outside the potential is infinity. So, u is 0 and the value is must be continuous. So, this the solution of this turns out to be some Bessel functions. These are the solutions. R times J L K R. So, at R equal to 0, it is anyway 0, it should be, and R equal to R naught, R equal to R naught, this, this should be 0. So, when you apply that condition, it is J L K R. What is K by the way? All of a sudden, I brought K here. This K is related to this E. Okay, this k is square root of 2 m e over h cross square. Right. This 2 m by h cross square you take to other side. So, it will become 2 m e by h cross square that is written as k square. So, once you know k you know energy e and which mass is this mass of proton yes yes it is mass of proton we are writing single particle potential. So, each proton and each neutron is uh, expected to experience this potential. So, these are single particle levels these are single particle energy levels. If you have one proton in one particular level you say that okay, this proton has this much of energy. So, these energies that we are writing here they are single particle energies and therefore, this m that appears that is also for that single particle which can be proton which can be neutron. So, that m is there. Now, this is Bessel function. So, the, we, the you can one, one can write the expressions for Bessel function or solve this this is equal to 0. So, what is the value of k r naught r naught is already fixed from the potential that you have chosen. 2 femtometer or whatever you choose and correspondingly you can get those k. Now, it depends on L because the Bessel function that is he written here has different functional form for different L. If L is equal to 0 it is simple sin function, if it is L is equal to 1 it will be more complicated L equal to 2 more. So, you start with one particular L say L equal to 0 and then there you have a function and then ask when this function becomes 0. So, what are those values? So, take those values and from there you find different values of k and therefore, different values of e. So, there will be a list of uh, values then you take l equal to 1 
and with l equal to 1 it is a different function now and that function equal to 0 will give another set of values of this k r naught and from there you get another set of values of this k and therefore, another set of values of this e. So, all those energies. So, you have to list all those energies which comes after what so that you get that energy level diagram. Now, the order relative order I will show you. So, L is equal to 0 with L is equal to 0 you get uh, the smallest value of this k r naught then next larger then next larger then next larger those are termed as n equal to 1, n equal to 2, n equal to 3, n equal to 4, n equal to 5 and so on. So, with L is equal to 0 you will have n is equal to 1, n is equal to 2, n is equal to 3 and so on this will be one set. Then you will start with L is equal to 1. So, L equal to 1 will be a different functional form and when you solve that equal to 0 you again get values certain values of k r naught and the first value will be called n equal to 1 next value will be called n equal to 2 and so on. So, with L is equal to 1 you will have n equal to 1 n equal to 2 n equal to 3 and so on similarly for l equal to 2 and so on right. So, this n and l does not bear the same relation as in atomic physics the l is uh, orbital angular momentum that is fine l l l l plus 1 h cross square by but the n and l relation of that here l equal to 0 you have a full series l equal to 1 you have a full series l equal to 2 you have a full series and so on right independently. So, I will show the order of energies each each of this corresponds to one particular energy okay. and the symbols are same l equal to 0 are called s states l equal to 1 are called p states then l equal to 2 are called d states then f then g then h i and so on. So, those symbols we will be using. So, in what uh, sequence these energies appear n and l. So, I will show you on the on the screen. So, this is infinite square will potential and the first lowest energy comes 1 s when l is equal to 0 and n equal to 1 hmm, the lowest one next energy appears somewhere here 1 p. So, this is n is equal to 1 and l is equal to 1 in uh, uh, atomic physics you do not have 1 p state in atomic physics you have 1 s then 2 s 2 p, but here you, have, you will have 1 p 1 d everything all right. Next higher energy comes here 1 d then comes 2 s right and after that it is 1 f 2 p 1 g 2 d 1 h 3 s there will be more we do not have to work with 1000 nuclei. So, we do not have to go much beyond this. So, this is the sequence ok. Now, let me draw this sequence on the board also ok. Let me draw this on the board and uh, help me what is the lowest one 1 s next next is 1 p then 1 d and 2 s is close to it right 1 d and then you have 2 s and 1 f 2 p and 1 g is close 2 d 1 h and 3 s all quite close right. Now, let us look at the occupancy uh, if it is uh, fermion 
then uh, one quantum state will accommodate one, but we have not taken spin of that particle into account. This is only L part orbital part. So, with this one s I will have two protons or two neutrons can go there one with spin up one with spin down. The quantum state will be defined by this spatial part plus the spin part. So, there are in fact two quantum states at this level one with spin up one with spin down this degenerate. So, we it can accommodate two p 6 d s f p g hmm? 18 d h 22 18 then 22 s 2. So, this is one gap. So, your shell is here then after the gap another big gap here. So, next will be next shell closure will be here. So, a total of 8 particles and the shell will close here. So, 8 then 10 and 2 they are close enough. So, this is one group. So, 8 and plus 12 20 and then there is a gap. So, next shell closure will be 20 nice magic numbers are coming. Then this is uh, what? 14 and then there is a gap of course. So, this comes at 34 that is not a magic number suggested by the experiments. There is no such discontinuities at this. Then you will have uh, uh, what do I do 40 and then and then no this, this you this is one group they are close enough. So, uh, 10 then uh, how much is this total 34 and add to it 92. So, worked up to here and yeah these are uh, the right numbers we were expecting and beyond this everything goes bad. So, maybe that infinity square well potential I had taken is 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 not uh, the right potential to take change to something else and perhaps things will improve. So, second uh, potential that I know uh, how to solve is linear harmonic not linear three dimensional harmonic potential. Uh, three dimensional harmonic potential I do not have to do much energy levels are very nicely given by a simple formula. So, if you have single particle potential as V r is equal to half m omega square r square this is the potential and uh, similar right Schrodinger equation and in terms of u and this is also a central potential. So, y l m theta phi will be there and then solve for u you know, with uh, this v correct with this v ok. Let me write. So, phi r is u r by r same thing in fact repeated repeated y l m theta phi. This portion will not change this theta phi part will not change as long as it is central potential that theta phi part will be same and this u will be now minus h cross square by 2 m d 2 u d r square plus v r v r is this v r is half m omega square r square plus l l plus 1 h cross square by 2 m r square u is equal to u. So, this is to be solved ok this is to be solved and uh, from here using the boundary conditions so, uh, this should not become infinity and other things and get the values of e and this e turns out to be 2 n plus l plus 3 by 2 times h cross omega. Hmm. So, energy depends on n and l 
and this is how it depends and you can put n going from 0 onwards and L uh, is again 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, although this n is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, but the label that we will put will be one more than this. So, at n equal to 0, we will write that that is 1. See, n equal to 0, l equal to 0, we will write at 1 s. Uh, so, the label will be one more this n. If you wish, you can call it n prime and then n will be n prime plus 1 or you can call it 2 n plus 1 minus 1 by 2, then it will match. What? Okay, so, let us uh, look at the energies. So, you can write this as capital N plus 3 by 2 h cross omega and this capital N can take values starting from 0, when N L L both are 0, this will be 0. So, 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. Let me do it here. So, what is the lowest energy? Huh? How much, how many h cross omega? 3 by 2 h cross omega, when this capital N is 0, huh? then the energy is 3 by 2 h cross omega, that is the minimum energy. So, you have a line here, put a line here, this is the lowest energy and this capital N is equal to 0, this is 0, this is 0, that will happen only when N is equal to 0 and L equal to 0, right n equal to 0 and so capital N is equal to 0, this is the lowest energy, this will happen when n is equal to 0 and L is equal to 0 and we will write it as 1 s. So, you have 1 s here. Next energy, next higher energy 5 by 2 h cross omega, when this capital N is equal to 1 what are the values of small n and l to make capital N equal to 1? So, this is 1. So, n is equal to? L is equal to? 1. So, was, okay, so n is equal to 0 and l is equal to 1. What is this state called? 1 p, 1 p. Right. So, 1 p. So, we will put 1 p here. That gap is at cross omega. Next one will be n is equal to 2. This capital N should be 2. What are values of small n and what are values corresponding value of small l? Uh, l is equal to? 0 l is equal to 0, n equal to 1. Yes. Anything else? Capital N is 2 n plus L. I need capital N equal to 2. Uh, one solution you gave put uh, what n equal to 1 and L is equal to 0. Any other combination? Huh? There are two possibilities, one is you put 1 here and 0 here yeah, or you put 0 here and 2 here. Yeah. You put, put 0 here and 2 here, then also you will get this. Yeah. So, one possibility is you put 1 here and 0 here. So, n is equal to 1 and l is equal to 0 and together with this you can also have n equal to 0, l is equal to 2. Both of these combinations will give you capital N equal to 2. Right? So, this energy can be obtained, this will be 2 s, this is 2 s, n equal to 1 and l equal to 0, it is 2 s and what is this? 1 d, 2 s and 1 d energies will coincide. So, next energy which is h cross omega above this, 
you have 2 s and 1 d. So, 1 d and 2 s all this will have the same energy. Next capital N is equal to 3 how can you get this capital N equal to 3 n equal to 1 l equal to 1 anything else n is equal to 0 l is equal to 3 that is all for capital n equal to 3 you can't do anything else right so this is l equal to 3 n equal to 0 l equal to 3 what it will be called 1d is already there 1 f l equal to 0 is s l equal to 1 is p l equal to 2 is d and l equal to 3 is f so this is 1 f same difference this is 1 f and the other one is what is this 2 p this is 2 and this is p so 2 p so at the same level at the same energy you have 1 f and 2 p next n equal to 4 small n equal to here it is i need capital n equal to 4 n equal to 1 l is equal to 2 next 2 anything else huh? Uh -huh. yeah yeah correct n equal to 0 and l equal to 4 so this was 1 f and now it is 1 g n equal to 0 l equal to 3 was 1 f so n equal to 0 l equal to 4 1 g and so this is then this one 2 d 2 d so 2 d and this one 3 s so 3 s and similarly you can construct others okay let us look at the occupancies at this energy level how many protons can be put two two protons can be put two neutron can also be put here six here twelve very good ten here and two here so twelve you can put twelve here here huh? f is 14 and p is 20 right 20 now here see 4 up uh -huh, ok g ok let us do it that way g is 18 let me write s p d f g h 2 6 10 14 18 22 so 1 g is 18 then 2 d is 18 plus 10 28 and plus s 30. So, here it is 30. Okay. Now, without going through this can you see the sequence and tell me what it what it will be here pattern pattern recognition see 1 s 1 p 1 d 1 f 1 g 1 h should be here right then 2 s 2 p 2 d uh, so 2 f should be here 3 s is already here so 3 p do i have 4 s here see 1 s is here then 2 s starts here 1 jump 3 s starts here so 4 s will go here no 4 s just pattern recognition and how much will be the occupancy h 22 plus f 14 36 and plus p 42 so this will be 42 
this level will accommodate 42. Now, cumulative from the bottom 2 shell closes there is a gap then 2 plus 6 8 shell closes there is a gap 8 plus 12 20 and then 40 out out does not help whether it is an infinite square well potential or it is a harmonic potential it is all the same first three are reproduced and the rest are not. Now, both these potentials have some problems both are infinite and in infinite means if a particle is bound you just cannot take it out by giving any amount of energy hmm? infinity square potential is infinite and this harmonic potential also goes to infinity. So, it is unrealistic in a nucleus we know that if I give uh, a certain energy a proton can be taken out that is proton separation is an energy or if I give a certain amount of energy a neutron can be taken out that is neutron separation energy, but the potentials that we have chosen uh, are infinite potentials. So, that means, uh, uh, you can never take a nucleon out of that. So, this is indeed an unrealistic potential both of them are unrealistic potential. So, next uh, level would be that uh, one should try a more realistic potential a finite potential. So, that uh, at least I should be able to take that nucleon out. So, for finite potentials also we have certain choices finite square well potential could be one. So, that one can see then finite square well potential with exponential edges because you know the nucleus is not something where you have sharp edges it is a diffused right the 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 charge distribution you saw the wood section potential wood section distribution it is all diffused and any realistic system does not suddenly jump up to here it is this and then suddenly it becomes 0. So, if the those edges are rounded so a square well potential type, but the edges are rounded that is another possibility. So, many other things can be tried with finite uh, potentials and maybe next lecture I will uh, I will show the results for such calculations. In fact, in those days it was very very fascinating hmm? all right.